<coughs> Hello, noob elves and noob deads and noob humans and noob orcs. I think I used this uh, opening before, but whatever. I still own you. Good game. Alright, anyway, this will be the last commentary I do. Until I upgrade my computer. Owned, yeah. Uh, <coughs> 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 Sorry. <coughs> I should have done that before I said new computer. That would have even made the suspense even better. Whatever. <coughs> anyway, that was involuntary, so don't blame me. Uh, I don't have a cold this time. I actually, I can breathe through my nose, so that should help a little bit. I may have a little bit of a cough and whatnot, but it should be okay. In any event, this is Orc vs. Human without a Farseer. I know that may be very shocking to you, and oh my god, what the fuck, barbecue, but in general, it's uh, I think it's actually a really good opening. A uh, good strat in general, that kind of a thing. Really? I don't think the Farseer's a good hero anymore. Um, wolves definitely deal good damage, and in a sense, they can tank for your grunts. Like, if they choose to focus those over your grunts, I'm talking about, like, mid-game like mid -game when, you know, focusing units is what you do, and 500 hit points extra or whatever is a big deal. In any event, um, I think the TC is uh, extremely good because, though it won't do anything against slow, it, uh, at least for in terms of movement speed, it will help in terms of your attack speed. Uh, it helped balance that out a little bit, so you can actually fight riflemen one-on-one -on -one with slow on you, and uh, so that you can... And Shockwave is very good once you start leveling that up, because there's no brilliance, so there's no really point in getting an intel hero first you know, if there's no support for your for your TC, because a lot of what, what people will do... Um, and I know... This this is it's, uh, this isn't exactly what uh, I was going to say a second ago, but you know, Grubby, uh, for example, puts his TC in the front lines, lightning shields it, and then has it rip the crap out of every unit there. Now, in my experience, when I do that, I get bolted and killed in about three seconds. I still be going TC first. He's always carrying the TP. Uh, he's going to be higher levels. So he's actually going to have a lot of hit points and armor. And just FYI, uh, if you don't count hero spells, as in spike carapace for the Crypt Lord and uh, possibly evasion and meta, you know, on the DH. The TC is the biggest tank in the game, followed by the Pit Lord and then the Crypt Lord. Now, of course, you put carapace on the Crypt Lord, he is literally the biggest tank in the game. So undeads who say, oh, the Crypt Lord's made of paper, just focus him. No, he's the biggest tank in the game. Good job, you're noobs. Anyway, so yes, there's my flame to undead players who think Crypt Lord first isn't as strong as DK first. Oh, yeah, it is. You get free tanking. In any event, I think it's a good strat because high-level Shockwave owns. You can put him in there to Lightning Shield, do even more AoE damage. And then your second hero is opened up to something besides having TCFS, which means you don't have summons that are owned by Dispel, or by Priest AoE Dispel quite so much. Uh, and you have other support spells. I don't think Chain Lightning's a really great AoE spell. Uh, I think if you're actually going for AoE, you should go Panda second, and of course try to level, level him up as well. As they're both strength heroes, they'll be pretty durable. As long as you get some plus armor and plus agility on them for the armor, and you know, then plus strength is useful as well. But you really want to get armor on strength heroes most of all. And if you can get those guys as really good tanks with a great AOE, you can rip through everything. So that's always something to think about. In any event, uh, we'll be doing an unpause from the one minute mark. Probably should have told you that earlier, but whatever. Too too bad, noobs. You should have read the uh, the little uh, post or whatever about the audio saying pause at 60 seconds. So GG. Uh, in any event, DOS is a new, and we're going to unpause in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, unpause. So right now, you are seeing it from my point of view in the first place. Keep the Fog of War on. I'm not sure if I said that or not. But you can see this Gosu base build that uh, I like to use. Because it protects the burrow, and it, the burrow is protecting pretty much all your buildings. It's nice because the burrow is like, behind a bunch of stuff, and it gives you a lot of room that you can please protect buildings other, uh, in other areas. It's always a good idea to plan your base build such that... Uh, you have lots of room, you can have all your structures supported by all your bureaus and whatnot, and it just it gives you room to move around so that you don't get easily like, killed being chased in your base. The one thing to think about is also making a base build like humans do, and you know making some chokes that you can either like surround here by summoning wolves, for instance, or putting in PM blocks. And sometimes that just kind of happens by accident. I mean, there isn't a lot of room next to my altar. Down by the trees, I could technically take some peons off and try to pro probably make a block. Now, off to the right-hand side, I probably couldn't make one, but, you know, I could just cut that off. But now you see I put, a, put up this voodoo lounge, uh, just trying to build that block a little bit more so that the only way I can really get through my opponent would be around the right-hand side. And maybe he spawned on the right or the top left, so he, he'd actually go through there anyway. But, you know, whatever. In any event... Endurance Aura First is what you should do when you go TC, because you're not going to TC Harass, you're going to TC Creep. Shockwave is not a creeping spell. Don't do it. His mana regen blows. 
you're not going to get anything out of 65 damage Shockwaver, 25 damage, 2 seconds on War Stomp. So, use Endurance Aura, get a little more damage, get around the map faster. In general, it's good, so do that. As you can see, my uh, Grunt attacks it fast with just one uh, Endurance Aura. Uh, regular Torrens, like as in the, the actual unit from the Tier 3 building, attack it fast only at level 3 Endurance. So they don't attack as fast as Grunts do. But whatever. Now I see this pe this uh, peasant over here, and I'm gonna go own him like a noob. As you can see, you can see this little waypoint thing going off on the map. That's uh, having a pee on scout. Now what I should have realized is that that peasant was normal form. That obviously he wouldn't be from the right hand side. But uh, actually, I did sort of know that. And as you can see, I'm scouting over towards the left. So I killed that. Unfortunately, he knows I'm going TC, but who cares? And uh, my build, by the way, is <coughs> the fast rax build. Where you get a rax as soon as your hero's out. Which is um, Alter, Burrow, and then Barracks, all on f with four on gold. Then go on gold, go on wood, go up to 16 food, and get the Burrow, get get your Grunt, then get another, then get your Voodoo Lounge, then get a Peasant, and then you can make your, uh, I guess, second Grunt or third Grunt or whatever, uh, right as the Burrow finishes, and it works out really well. So do that. Now, unfortunately, I'm a noob, and I didn't see my ally, or my opponent. So good job there, because Nightfall came. I scouted late, so always take account of, uh, take Nightfall into account, because as you can see, I sort of don't see any buildings, which is pretty noob. However, uh, you can see that I'm actually sending this guy back, realizing that I didn't uh, see into the base. I didn't see creeps. So I was like, oh look, buildings. Okay, so now I know where he is. He's getting owned by this tower, unfortunately. So I'm gonna quickly send him home. Actually, I'm first gonna go after this peasant, try to kill him. So I deal some damage to him, get him pretty low so that he can be killed uh, pretty quickly. I lose him, but whatever. Because you know what? I'm going to cast Shockwave. Good game. Kill the worker. Now, I think he canceled the shop, I think. I'm not sure, but whatever. Anyway, I try to run back. Now, unfortunately, surround owned. Good game. But <clears throat> now I could have saved that peasant, and I could have saved uh, that peon. I could have saved uh, myself from 25 EXP. But, you know, I wanted to make sure I could kill that one worker so that I could uh, get rid of his shop because... If you don't let humans have a shop and you can keep harassing them, they're going to lose because they can't heal up the footmen. Footmen have no hit points. All he's left with is water mentals. And as long as you can do well with your TC, you'll be in good shape. Get it? Because Endurance Lord gives you a speed advantage. You can chase stuff down a little bit. You attack faster, so you have really good uh, damage uh, per second. You can pretty much knock out footies. Now, unfortunately, I won't have Berserker Strength, which makes Grunts actually really good. Um, so footies can stand up to them for now. Yep. Yeah, I just haven't changed it. Yeah, I can do that. Alright, I can do that. Yeah, I know. Love you too. Yep. So anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so we're at 5 minutes 35. I went and healed up pretty much. That's all I did. Um... What I pretty much realized is that I couldn't go into his base much more as I had some pretty injured grunts. He had that tower up still, and though I could have delayed his building some more, I just decided that, you know what, I'm just going to give myself some higher hero levels, get up to level 2 shockwave, and just go from there. So, clarity pretty much times out, and I'm going to go wake up the creeps and be cool like that. So, you can see that I pulled back the injured grunt a little bit so that he hopefully wouldn't be tanking, and then I had to pull him back again, he was still getting hit, so whatever, but... Knock out that creep. Gonna pull my grunt back as far as I can. Try to get him away from uh, these creeps soon so that he doesn't get owned. You can see I move him over. He's not getting hit anymore so I can pull him back. Knock out this newbie zerk right here. And then I'm gonna go for the Tomb of Agility. Because that's cool. All the ghosts do that. So, there I am. Just killing creeps. Nothing special. But like, you can see that I got my level 3. Which is a big deal. I've killed 2 peasants so far, I believe, overall. Which is pretty nice. As you can see, the tier 2 benefit is giving me some extra EXP as well. So my TC's in good shape in general. He's got, uh, you know, that whopping almost 900 HP. Four armor is big. He's got a really good reduction. And I pick up the Fire Lord. Now, in this instance, I actually go incinerate first because I really want to... <clears throat> I figure that, you know, his shop, you know, hasn't been up for long. He probably has a lot of injured units if he just went creeping. I probably do a lot of AoE damage and kill a lot of footies with AoE. I think I think it's possible. Unfortunately, I'm taking this tanking this uh, noob tower, but here we go. So I'm, I figured I've got a pretty good uh, advantage right here. He's only got footmen, so I could own the fool. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna go after uh, his army. 
I'm going to knock out as many footmen as possible. You're going to see I knock on one right here, and he just TPs out, realizing he has nothing. So, that's what happens there. I'm about to shockwave, but too late. Cast it too slowly, and the one rifle uh, lives. Would have killed it, which would have been nice. Now, I want to try to uh, shockwave his army just to stop the thing, but I realize, you know what? I'm not going to get any kills because I actually checked the lowest hit point unit. I saw he was over 135, so I figured it wasn't really worth it. But you're going to see that I'm just going to knock out these two workers right here, or at least the one anyway. I uh, shockwave down and do get some damage onto his army. And knock out the worker. I'm gonna knock out the shop again so he hopefully can't heal his, up his army up anymore. Unfortunately, most of that's already taken in uh, effect. But, you know, still preventing whatever I can is a good idea. Unfortunately, he bolts one of my guys, which is horrible for me. But, you know, so I just have to back up. Now, I, he's got militia, so really you cannot fight with militia. I mean, my AoE is not really strong enough to account for that. But, Starcraft goes off, kills two workers. Now, unfortunately, I've lost two grunts. He's lost only two militia, really. Uh, recently, so I'm just going to have to knock out whatever I can, he pulls back a rifleman as you can see, just microing it out, he kills some more guys, and I'm just going to try to knock out his MK, he's taking a lot of damage as you can see, and center is really stacking up damage, and he uses the potion, so down that goes, sigh, but you know, <coughs> made him use a potion, <coughs> 150 gold down the drain, that's fine, and I'm going to knock out footman, you can see I knocked another one right there, so I'm doing pretty decently, I, I've lost three grunts, he's used a potion, uh, footman, bunch of uh, peasants, so I'm doing pretty decently overall. Uh, still a level 2 Fire Lord, but Incinerate is just really racking up a lot of damage. You can see I knock out another, uh, another footman, just, you know, focusing down on the uh, injured footmen that I can, f injured footmen I can get. You see I kill another one here, I see an injured rifle, kill that one. I'm just getting a ton of kills right now, because as the army sizes are winding down, I actually, uh, can do a lot of damage with Incinerate and stuff. Now, interesting thing, I actually get the level up right here, which would have made him live, and then forget to run back the rest of the way, so that's a bad move there. However, I see this injured footman right here, so I'm going to knock him down and then get out. <coughs> Realize that I don't have any army anymore, so let's leave. Yeah, pick up this other grunt. And I'm out. Now, you can see I have an attack upgrade on my grunts right now. Because that was uh, the cheapest upgrade at the time, I was low on money. And when I decided to research, it's like, I have 100 gold, let's research. Because I'm going to have to start micro soon, I don't want to have to, you know, press 7 and, you know, find the, uh, the button and everything. So, just better just do what I have now, so that I don't have to, you know, worry about later, I'll probably forget, so whatever. <clears throat> In any event, I like to stay at 50 food pretty much the entire time. Um, now, that's not always the smartest thing to do, but <clears throat> for now, since the army sizes are staying small, I don't want to get in this money disadvantage and just let them... Because really, if uh, I get a big army, all he has to do is really sit in his base with his ranged and sit behind the tower and just pick me off while I get, you know, more and more money lost from upkeep. I don't really gain anything out of that because he can always bolt, focus slow, and I'll lose stuff. So I'm playing an aggressive game so that he doesn't have enough of a sort of turtle army where he can turtle in his base. But also, uh, you know, playing safely enough, safely enough to be able to heal. But one of the main things I'm trying to do is get these add up shaman in here that can just kill everything. So you're going to see I'm going to try to go after this uh, priest. Unfortunately, I can't purge it in time, so I'm just going to go after the buildings in his base. You're going to see I'm going to go after this arcane vault as soon as possible. You're gonna, I'm going to use my grunts to focus him down. I use shockwave to help kill it. As, you know, shockwave hits the building and the peasants, it's worth it to me. Uh, kind of odd, but, you know, whatever. You know, I could have used some more mana regen. I didn't really have to go right there, but whatever. You're going to see I go shockwave again. I'm just going to focus on everything I can. I see that noob WE up there. I'm going to purge it, as you can see, and knock it down really quickly with lightning shield mostly. I've got this uh, fire load up here, so I'm going to start casting my fire spawns. Now, I realize he does have priest to spell, but... You know what? He... They have pretty good hit points in general. They're, they'll be pretty good tanks against uh, the priest. I think they'll be okay. Unfortunately, he gets level 4 Archimage, and he gets the Book of the Dead. Now, the thing about the Book of the Dead is you really want to TP out of it eh, as fast as possible, just because it'll minimize actual damage you take. As you can see, I knocked out that peasant just barely right there. And... <clears throat> I got out. Now, I didn't really lose anything... Uh, uh, I didn't really lose so much uh, from that TP. I lost the TP, but you can see my army is still really close to 50 food, and my opponent's is uh, 34. So you can see that this pressure is giving me a lot of uh, extra damage. You know, I'm just picking off units left and right, and uh, though Incinerate isn't huge damage, it really does add up quite quickly because he attacks very fast. Uh, not Warcraft runs very fast, but he attacks very fast with Endurance on him, being an agility hero that actually is a damage hero. So, <clears throat> and I'm just keeping the pressure, realizing that, yes, he has, you know, brilliance, but since every time i fought him, I've killed his shop, it's really hard for him to be able to heal up his army. You know, shock goes off, and he has no way to counteract that. So, as I'm keeping the pressure on, he doesn't have lots of mana on his heroes, lots of hit points 
on his units. He, he, he never has any full mana heroes. So you can see I'm going to fight again. Shaka's going to go off. You see it does pretty well against the summons. You see I instantly purge away that stuff. I'm going to try to speed scroll into his front, into his uh, army. Lightning shield, of course, being a uh, good thing to do. And I'm going to have to eat the potion pretty soon. Now one sort of bad move is that I'm lightning shielding on my grunts. But the fact that it was knocking out his, uh, his MK really fast was probably more important. That yes, I take, you know, 20 damage on my grunts, whatever. Killing, making sure his MK dies is more important. So you can see that now that I was keeping the, the TC back so that he wouldn't get himself owned. And right now I'm really just trying to, uh... And you can see I'm making this 50 food army and taking the tier 3 as I had a bunch of money. And I'm getting, you know, armor research, spending my money, but still keeping at the 50 food count. And I'm just trying to, you know, keep an army that's bigger than his. As you can see, I still have uh, 11 food advantage over him, but I don't know that exactly. I see that his army's rather low. And the only reason I really got, I ran away is because my whole army was slow. I didn't want to get picked off a lot. And, you know, now he's got level 2 brains to bring his mana back up. You know, now his sorks have less mana in general. And I got a bunch of kills in general with, you know, the Fire Lord and, uh... Fire Lord Incinerate and with Shockwave, so... You know, I thought it was, it was pretty good. You know, I maybe could have pushed a little bit harder, but... You know, I don't... I just want to play safe, because if you play Risky... Uh, I don't have a TP, you know? And with Slow, I could have lost my army. And now that I have a bunch of money, I... It's a lot easier for me to, uh... Yeah, maybe buy a TP and, and whatnot. Haven't done that yet, but I'm not really sure all that money went. Oh yeah, I'm getting the Spirit Walker research so that I can get Spirit Walkers for Disenchant because Purge does not counter slow. And I really noticed that you know I was really really slowed. My army was you know under the effect of lots of slow. That's bad for me. I didn't want to have that happen. So there you go. Now I sold the class so that I can get a potion plus six damage. Yeah, it's probably you know nice, but. It's not going to mean so much in the grand scheme of things when I have 10 damage per second lightning shield and, you know, shockwave and incinerate. Six damage, not so much. It's not a big deal. You know, getting that potion faster and being able to attack faster is more important. Maybe, you know, he'll have 20 less hit points in all his units because I attacked five seconds faster, you know, could make a big difference. Now, anyway, I decide that it's time to win it because I've got really good hero levels. You know, I've got 4-3, which is great. You know, level 2 endurance and uh, having that, uh, that goes to level 2... Uh, incinerate is big. So I'm just going to knock out the shop as fast as possible, make sure my Shaman are far away from the tower, going to keep my TC away from the tower so he doesn't retarget. And I'm just going to wait to put the towers up. I don't want to get in a bad position, I'm just going to chill out. Do so you see these peons go up here? And I'm like, oh look, an army. Go, 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 go. No, unfortunately I lose a peon, but whatever. I'm going to start up these towers. Now one of the nice things about the uh, 117 is that you can just select them all and press W click, W click, W click, or B W click, B W click, B W click, whatever, and all three will build a tower, which is really, really awesome. Now you can see he, the smart thing to do he does is calling Militia to go after my uh, my towers. You let the Militia work on the towers, you know, let his army work on my army. Yeah, should do pretty well. But with his mass AoE right here with Incinerate and Shockwave, you're going to see that I'm just going to whip through his army. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of mana right now. Uh, on my TC specifically, but once he levels up, you know, I'll have a ton. So you can see, you just quickly purge away the WE. Poof, down it goes. Get level 5, learn Shockwave. Now, unfortunately, I got a bad Shockwave, but, you know, towers are going up. Uh, you know, his Archmage is about to die, and he leaves. So, ultimately, what I was trying to do is AoE, because human is, in general, weak to area of effect, you know. If you can keep the pressure on, rifles will not be durable. That's um, something I experienced playing human, that if they get a really good early harass, you're screwed because you're going to be constantly trying to hold up to them, you know, try to keep your army the same size. And, you know, your time of the game is mid-game when, you know, you've got slorks and rifles and everything, and you've still got a, a footman wall if you kept them alive. What I had done is really done a lot to kill a footman wall with a uh, endurance or a grunts, you know, they just rip through Footman with that shockwave in there, which you, you know, wasn't used to. That rips through Footman because, you know, it doesn't decrease per, uh, you know, per hit, you know. Uh, chain Lightning will do 85, then like 75, then 60, you know, and it, it degrades fast. And, you know, it'll hit four targets at level one for really pretty minimal damage. Yeah, you can directly target one guy and probably kill it. But after that, eh, it doesn't do much for you. You know, it's, it's not a lot of damage in it. As, whereas for Shockwave, it'll deal full damage to all the units that you target, which means, you know, in some of the cases, I was hitting 7, 8, 9 units, which you'd only 
get that many if you have level 3 Chain Lightning. And if you compare the damage of level 3 Shockwave to level 3 Chain Lightning, the Shockwave's a lot bigger, hits more targets, does more damage, and though it doesn't hit air, you know, big deal, I could probably push him if he went air. I could tower him and, you know, just kill him with Grunts and Shockwave and whatnot. The Arcane Tower won't be that hard to kill. And just go from there. Uh, and then Incinerate is just icing because of the extra attack speed, I can get a lot more Incinerate hits on them, and it'll just keep adding in damage, suddenly the unit just dies in 2 seconds. As you can saw, as you can see, I killed, I almost killed the MK the one time when I used the Book of the Dead and used the potion. Uh, yeah, I was doing damage to him a lot quicker, a lot more quickly than I thought I would be, just because high level endurance or endurance in general, which you generally won't have that high level uh, if you go second, you know. And Incinerate was really adding in a lot of damage. That even though I had you know some piercing units, uh, that was actually doing quite a lot of damage. Even though you know they did half off, then it would start adding three, four, five damage per hit from. Uh, incinerate. So the the damage you actually deal to units is really a lot bigger than you think. And one of the nice things about that is that 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 will actually knock out that MK extremely quickly. Because normally one of the things that human relies on is clapping and slowing your grunts. And there's no way in heck they're going to get rid of that MK because he's got 800, 900, 1,000 hit points, decent armor. Your grunts are attacking it like once every seven seconds. You know you're not going to kill anything that way while he's using priest heal and the MK just won't die. And so with Incinerate and Shockwave and whatnot, um, you know, making his priests uh, divert their attention elsewhere, and with, and with Incinerate really stealing a lot of extra damage to that MK, he will quickly fall. And when you've got Endurance Aura adding some attack speed to help counter that clap and slow, you you can actually just nullify that MK tanking thing. And with some Lava Spawns as some extra damage, you know, they attack at fast speed. And with Endurance, they attack even faster. You can actually add in some damage extremely uh, extremely quickly, and that's something that people won't be used to. And you, you might even consider going Stomp with Lightning Shield or, you know, whatever. Just for some other random fun, if you ever want to test that out, that might be strong as well. You know, just, you know don't be afraid to experiment. I had a thought of going uh, Tinker Dark Ranger against Human. Because you figure you have this huge summonable front line, and if you can silence the priests, there's no way they're going to get rid of you, and you mass HH, and win that way. You've got you know this sort of the, it's sort of like the Crippler Fiends effect where you've got you know two you've got a bunch of summons for tanking, and you've got a bunch of ranged in the back. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is that if you go quick to HH, defendant footman will kill you, and if you go grunts, really an Archmage with Water Muscles will beat you because the pocket factory is not very good and. Uh, if you're getting attacked early, you know you don't have moonwells like night elf do, and burrows only do so much because they can still focus them down. So that's something that's really tough. You may have to do you know something different for an opening. I don't know what. Maybe dark range would be a better opening and that kind of a thing. But you know it's always good to experiment, uh, such as the TC firelord experiment. I did something uh, uh, versus a clanmate of mine. I did a farseer and dark ranger. And though you might think Dark Ranger is a bad choice because, you know, you could just destroy all those skeletons. Uh, I silenced his entire army, grabbed his MK, all the priests and the sorks, and he couldn't heal, he couldn't cast slow, and specifically he couldn't dispel the wolves and skeletons I had. So that he couldn't even get rid of those summons that I had. He couldn't heal against the AoE that I was using. And, you know, I just overran him extremely quickly. You, you know, used Purge to kill his water mentals, and he was stuck with rifles and attack-moving casters. You know, casters that don't really do that much damage when, you know, when they're not casting their spells, if your grunts aren't slowed, you know, you can beat Sorks pretty easily. You know, and if his rifles aren't being constantly healed, and his MK's not being constantly healed, your grunts can pretty much knock them out pretty easily, so... It worked pretty well. Uh, in any event, so... Oh, I also had an interesting thing of playing a human mirror where I went mass summons and mass rifles... So that even if you went for, say, footies, they'd be killed by, like, Hawk and Bear and Fire Lord Elementals and, and Water Mentals or whatever. And so it's always fun to sort of theorycraft a strategy because uh, one of the things uh, really to do against human now that there's the, uh, the Fire Lord out there is that some humans will go uh, duel or even try summon heroes with the Beastmaster 3rd. Or, you know, Beastmaster 2nd and Fire Lord 3rd, and they will go mass summons. And if you ever see someone who does more than one summoning hero, go Spirit Walkers instead of Shaman, because really, uh, in terms of mana pool, uh, Spirit Walkers have more disenchants 
then Shaman have Purges, and though it's not as much to a single target, if there's more than one summon out, the total damage from the Dispel will be more, and it also get rid of Slow, or Fairy Fire, or whatever, and so they're actually really good uh, anti-summon heroes, and uh, as another, oh, one last thought, uh, one thing to try against Night Elf is to go TC Fire Lord, Mass HH, and Spirit Walker. And what that will do, and you eventually take up a Torrin, what that will do is their counter to uh, your HH is either archers or hunts or bears. Now, when you've got. Uh, now, you go either spawn or Solburn, depending on what they go. Uh, you start out with spawn, and once they start making a lot of dries to counter that, you switch to Solburn. You know, just retrain. It's only 300 gold, it's fine. And then you have their hero Solburns that their hero can't knock them out. Now, if they go Warden in general, if they go Warden first, just go straight to Solburn because you're not gonna, you're gonna want her to do, to be able to do nothing. And of course, you go Incinerate. And with Incinerate and HH, you can knock out the hero pretty quickly. And you know, even though you may not have Incinerate, that's actually pretty, that's actually really good. Uh, and so, Spirit Linked HH, Spirit Linked to your TC and stuff. Uh, your heroes won't be as easily killed by Shadow Strike and stuff. Your HH won't die so easily because, you know, they'll be linked up. And as long as you bring a healing scroll or two, which shouldn't be too hard, you, you're not going to lose that. You're not going to lose that at all. Even though, you know, he may focus with archers, you have to do is pull back that unit, which would be pretty easy because you've essentially got 700 or 900 uh, effective hit points, and then you multiply that by, you know, the medium armor bonus, so they last even even longer against uh, archers, or, you know, they still last pretty long against, against huntresses, and you can knock them out. So that's always something to just try to do. And also with Shockwave knocking out uh, dots and archers, it's even better. And so maybe they'll try to do dot archer, and you can just disenchant the dot effect, and, you know, it's it's actually a pretty good counter system, I think. It's it's uh, always good to sort of theorycraft your strats. And then later on, you can add in a raider if you really need to be able to pin this hero down. Though it's not as crucial, you know, you just let him run home, uh, use his moonwalls up, soul burn him again when he gets back, so that you know they can't do anything to you. So it's always good to think about the kind of things. Uh, so in any event, this will be the end of this commentary. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, good to see some kind of different things. It actually, it actually is a pretty good strat, I think, in general. Uh, with you know, TC Farland and whatnot. So, this will be the end of this. 2710. No, I guess it'll be more than that. I guess 2715. This will be Freak signing out. And uh, goodbye.